I've heard about this thing called 606 Entertainment. Yeah, man. Yeah, so, yeah. So for the people that don't know what's going on with that, tell them what that's about. Well, man, uh, so it's a uh, music studio that we've opened up. Uh, it's located um, right directly above Wright's Barbershop in uh, Prestonsburg. So it's on, uh, if you don't know where Wright's is, if you know where Billy Ray's is in Prestonsburg. Yeah. Uh, if you're going down the, the street there to Billy Ray's, it's literally a big uh, yellow building on the right, or it sits on the corner there. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's upstairs, man. And um, it's for right now, it's just a one-room uh, studio. Um but well, it's one room, a recording room, and then an engineering room. But we also have a workspace room, and then eventually build on a lounge to it. Uh, nice. So what we what we're working with is um, the barber shop, uh, or the building itself. Literally, is about a twenty five by twenty five. <laughs> Whoa. So yeah, yeah. So the bottom, obviously, the barber shop, it's all open space down there. And then once you go upstairs, it's kind of it used to be an old dentist office back in the sixties. That's kind of cool. wild, man. So, like, it, actually, in one of our storage closets, uh, it used to be the storage closet for the dentist room. You slide open one of the things. There, we were up there cleaning. There was a bunch of like moldings <laughs> for dental stuff. Whoa. Yeah, from like back in the sixties. It was crazy, and uh, yeah, like still had the overhead lamp in the room where the chair was. What did and you stuff. do with all that? Uh, actually, I had a man, dude, he came up there, and he wanted one of the light fixtures. He got that, and then while he was there, he said his uncle wanted those dental fixtures, so he took them. I, don't, I mean, I was like, go ahead, man. I have no use for 1960s dental Somebody fixtures. Somebody out but. there has that in their mouth right now. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I, I, I guess if you clean yeah. it good enough, go for it, yeah, man. Yeah, exactly. Go for yeah. it. So, That's vintage. Uh, <clears throat> vintage so, teeth. Um, that place hadn't been touched, man, in like 20 years. And uh, when I come along two years ago, um, so Rice Barbershop was owned by Gary Wright. I don't know if you yeah. know it, Gary at all, but but Gary was a big music man. Uh, I mean, heck, there was a B uh, B three organ set in the corner of the barbershop forever, man. A nineteen sixty three B three organ, oh, dude. I bet that sounds beautiful. It sounded beautiful, but it was pain in the butt to pack out of there, man. Thing was a yeah, beast. Damn thing, <laughs> heavy dude. So, uh, but actually, man, it's housed right now at uh, Mark Stevens Studio um, up Allen. He's doing restoration on it for us right now, which I don't have any intentions on lugging that thing up those steps to our studio. <laughs> so, so Mark will probably get those honors of keeping keeping the B three because I can't play organ anyway, so yeah. it's in better hands there. But um, so Gary was a big music man, and that place hadn't been touched upstairs in about twenty years. And um, <clears throat> so I went to clean it out, man. And uh, actually, uh, Aaron you know, Hoover that you've yeah. had on, man, he. Uh, he was uh, he was with me one day and he was just like, man, what's upstairs? I was like, dude, it's nothing. It's just trashed, like it's it's junked. And he was like, well, let's just go look. And I was like, all right, whatever. So we walk up there and I'm looking around, man, and I'm like, dude, you know, I was like, this place is like literally, it's one piece of glass away from a recording studio. And he's like, what do you mean? I was like, well, dude, it's an old dentist office. So we've got the when you come up the steps, you walk right in. There's two doors you can come into the engineering room, which would have been the secretary receptionist area in the mm-hmm. middle of the building. And then you can go in the one door of the corner, which would have been the waiting area. So in that oh, waiting area in the receptionist yeah. room, there's a window, you know. So we literally put up a piece of glass, man, and uh, we started there. So the waiting area is the bigger portion. That's the recording room. And then the engineering room is obviously in the middle of the building there. Cool, so yeah, man. man, it's a it's a pretty do- it's it's been a work in progress, but uh, it's kind of hard when you're trying to do the shop <laughs> all yeah. day and then do that in the evening. So. So, so is it already opened, or when are y'all um, opening? So what we're doing right now, man, is we're taking bookings for February because um, we still got a little bit of cosmetic work to do. Like I said, man, this building was built in 1916, and Whoa. that upstairs hadn't probably been touched. And when I say touch, I mean like somebody just literally up there living, like not trying to spruce it up, fix it up, nothing, in probably yeah. 20 years. So before that, like I said, the dentist office hadn't been in there probably since the 70s, since everything up there had been functional. So, I mean, like I said, this would have been probably a year now, or close to it, getting into a year now worth of work, trying to restore yeah. <clears throat> what portions of the building we're even using, because we're still not using like two of the rooms. So, I mean, we've kind of got a little, like I said, a little bit of cosmetic work left, um, still a little touch or, you know, a touch bit of equipment to come in. But other than that, man, we're hoping to be going by February, taking bookings and everything. So, So, like, uh, what made you want to start your own studio? What's your background? Um, So, man, like, 
I've been singing as long as I could talk. And I got into the uh, the Kentucky Opera Junior Pros when I was about six years old. And I uh, sang with them until I was 12, 13. So I spent about eight years in it. Wow. Um, so pretty much grew up around music my whole life. And not really saying grew up as in my uncle and daddy played. I grew up professionally around, you know what I'm saying? I spent, yeah. literally spent my summers and winters were spent two to three days at the Mountain Art Center all day long. Wow. <laughs> so just engulfed in it, man, and like obviously loved it. So, and man, when I whenever I left there, I kind of fell off with it for a little bit. I had a band in high school for a little while. And after that, man, I kind of just, I took off. You get, you know, life gets the best of you. You yeah. know, you start, you kind of, sadly enough, forget the dreams and start worrying about reality. Yeah. And uh, so, and, and the more I thought about it, man, I was just like, dude, music, is it a feasible career for me? Probably. Is it something that I want to put, I know how much drive that takes. Yeah. I know how much that takes to try to make it big, man. And it's like, it's kind of sitting there thinking like, do I really want to put that much into my life mm -hmm. to maybe one day I get 35 years old and it's like, dude, I'm still just hitting that rock every time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I can't break through. And so I was just like, man, you know, we'll find something else. But now I've been able to come back to it. You see what I mean? Yeah. So it's kind of full circle, man. So now I've come back to it. And really with the whole intentions with this, man, when it started – was I looked at it for people like Aaron and Chase and those guys. It's like, man, if you guys want to go do something, you could go to the Mac. I mean, you could go to Mark. You know, Mark's a great guy, has an amazing studio. And it's like, he gets you a great sound. Yeah. But can Mark go in there and chop it up, you know, do all the stuff that you're wanting to do for this rap stuff or hip hop stuff? Is he going to be able to do that? Or is anybody else in these studios around yeah. here going to be able to do that? So. Obviously, I'm not a rapper. I can't do that. <laughs> that's why I wish Chase could have been here. But that's kind of my, him and Aaron are kind of my other, you know, half. So, like, that's what they kind of cover for me. Uh, and then I cover kind of more of the, the live instrument, live recording kind of stuff like that. Yeah. So, um, but that was kind of the goal, man, was like, these kids have nowhere to go to express themselves and do their art forms, you know. And if they do, they're going to get charged an arm and a leg. Yeah, and there's no high school kid around here, or even college kid working around here that's going to pay a hundred dollars an hour for a session. Yeah, so we thought, I mean, you know, what could what could we reasonably charge, still make a decent profit, and have fun at the same time, man? And like, so we're like, well, twenty five dollars an hour. I think that's pretty reasonable. So yeah. that's kind of where it's going to start out at, man. And like I said, with the more experience that we gain, sure, that's liable to grow. Um, but we always want to keep it reasonable because that's the whole point of the place. Mm -hmm. It's not kind of like you said earlier. It it wasn't started with the intentions where I'm trying to make money. Like I literally have it for a passion that I'm trying to help everybody else. I don't want to yeah. try to, you know, like I said, I could charge 50, 75 an hour, but I mean, I'm going to get the same business as the Mac gets <laughs> yeah. and that's no diss to them. You know, they have their, their niche, they have their clientele, but we have to kind of look at the, at the wider, at the wider scope around here and say, okay, how many people can around here can afford 25 an hour and how many can afford hundred. But, but also, yeah. like you said earlier, I, I love Brennan and Mark is a fantastic guy. Yeah. But, yeah. but you got these people like they, they know the music that they know. Yeah, that, exactly. When, whenever it comes to you know hip hop and rap and yeah. this, the newer wave of music that's coming in, some of these uh, producers and uh, engineers around here may not be as familiar with that art form. Yeah, so yeah, it's going to be sure. hard to get the sound that you're looking for as an artist. Yeah, yeah. But if you got somebody that knows that well, then you can get that sound. Yeah, exactly. And, and you right. know, like it's and, and it's and it's all good. When if you want to make a great country record go to nashville if you yeah, want to make an yeah. amazing hip-hop record go to atlanta like there's places and people that know their stuff and i love how you're giving these newer artists who's wanting to do newer styles of music a place to go and do that yeah 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 like i said man that was kind of just the whole intentions with it and and it's kind of like i told the guys when we got into it i said look I said, I know we know probably maybe 10 or 15 rap guys around here right now that are doing it that we know of. I said, but, I said, you guys, I said, you're not ready. I said, this is going to be a live band place. Yeah. <laughs> I said, because I said, you got to look at the area we're in. I said, you guys are going to know some guys that do that. I said, but, I said, how many, there's 10 times more bar bands playing on the weekend. I said, so, you know, we're going to be doing country, rock, 
you know, all that stuff. I was yeah. like, so, yeah, you know, but that's what we needed, man. Like, there's a ton of bar bands out there that just can't go. They want to cut a little maybe four-song EP or something, but they can't afford to do that yeah. for four hours of time at the Mountain Art Center, you know. Versus yeah. what they could get for us for four hours, you know, four hundred dollars would be, you know, three days worth of work. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of a kind well, of. Well, it's great to have both, man. Like, yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, like just to get started to get that money to get those great recordings yeah, from yeah. a place like the Mountain Art Center in Brennan. Like, this is a good place to start that venture towards that. Exactly right. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I mean, times are rough, man. People ain't got a lot of money, so it, it's it's great that people are going to be able to afford this because i mean you're going to be making people's dreams come true dude exactly man. whenever they yeah. whenever they have a song of theirs that they have yeah, on yeah. their phone or a cd in their car if people still yeah, that they do went that. yeah that they went and recorded you know themselves like it's yeah. it's a big thing man for people yeah, man for real and and so many especially younger people that's a dream that will never come to fruition. Exactly, man. And, and now, and with what you're doing, people are going to be able to do that. Yeah, for sure. Because, you know, these younger artists that don't look into it, they don't realize how expensive a good record is to put out. Yeah, you're yeah, You're paying yeah. producers, you're paying engineers. And, I mean, it ain't just, I mean, some guys can maybe knock it out in a few hours, but if you really want to put some time into exactly, it, man. it takes it a few ta- days. That's exactly right. Yeah, it's not just a... Uh, it's not just go in there and record it and be out in an hour and call yeah. it call it a day. Like it's, no, it's not it as simple as that, like man. That. No, no, not it at don't. All. So where'd you go to like learn the stuff that you know? Like when it comes to producing and engineering and all that uh, good stuff. Well, I mean, I'll be honest with you, man. Uh, we have, really, none of us have any kind of technical schooling or anything for it. Um, but like I said, it just um, with my years of experience, my musical or you know my ear for music and stuff, along with chases and errands and all that. Um, that's really kind of what brings us again to that low rate. Because we're also at the same time that this bar band's starting out, we're starting out. Yeah. <laughs> so, and that's kind of, we're, we're charging a reasonable rate because at the same time we're getting experience with you, we're, you know, you're getting yeah. experience with us. So, like, um, right now, man, it's kind of just, I, I hate to say it this way, but it's almost experimental. Um, but it's an experimental in a way that we all have ears for music. So it's not like, uh, let me just try this and see how it sounds. You know, yeah. it's kind of let's get it till it gets right, and then once it's there, you know, it's there. 